Cabrini Green. Marcus oh! is on point. Oh! In the heavyweight division, a single punch can alter the course of a fighter's career. The sheer impact of a knockout in this weight class can be both breathtaking and devastating. In this video, we're spotlighting the most explosive and unforgettable heavyweight knockouts that have sent shockwaves to the MMA world. Sometimes too much. Oh! phone to try to get a matchup with a gun. The year 2006 marked the 10th anniversary of the Pride Fighting Championships. In February, at Pride 31, two fighters entered the ring looking for redemption after losing their Pride debuts. Roman Zetsov, nicknamed the Russian Hammer, and a former teammate of the legendary Fedor Emelianenko, squared off against Pedro Rizzo, a three-time UFC heavyweight title contender and one of the most dangerous strikers in heavyweight history. I trained two months for this fight, so I, I really wonder what this is going to be. He's been fighting in Holland, won everything. Oh, oh no! no! A punch by Roman Zetkov and just like that, oh, in no. lightning quick fashion, Rizzo goes for his trademark low kick and Zetkov times the shot perfectly. Guys, though, but gotta throw. Oh, wow! Down. After scoring the only late kick TKO in Dana White's contender series history, Cape Ferdine, mixed martial artist Jorgen De Castro, was set to face the Samoan former XFC heavyweight champion Justin Taffa. Both fighters were making their UFC debuts and entering the octagon undefeated. <laughs> nice kick to the body. Dog at plus 105. Ooh, nice uppercut there by Taffa. Big deep breath from the cat. After the fight, however, Jorgen went on a three-fight losing streak and lost his spot on the UFC roster, while Taffa went on to win several bouts, earning highlight reel knockouts. Former project hit from the Cabrini Green. 2009 saw some spectacular knockouts in Strike Force. One of them took place in Fresno, California in May with two heavyweight newcomers when 265-pound Samoan mixed martial artist Carl Sumanatafa squared off against former football player and boxer LeVar Johnson. In some ways, this is a classic battle between a striker and a grappler. To Fyodor Emelianenko. Yeah, I gotta tell you, we're not taking it away from this. Oh my god, that's it! After completely dominating the Pride heavyweight division, Fedor Emelianenko was widely regarded as one of the most dangerous and feared heavyweights in the world. Oh, boy! He ranked in the top 10 at the moment. Oh, no! Oh, oh. And when Pride was bought by the UFC in 2007, Fedor continued his career in multiple organizations, eventually becoming the Affliction heavyweight champion. In his first title defense, he faced former UFC heavyweight champion Andre Arlovsky, 
who holds the record for most wins in UFC heavyweight history and was considered a serious threat to the heavyweight king. And still, the Whamma Undisputed Heavyweight World Champion. In September 2021, after a one-year hiatus due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the UFC announced the return of International Fight Week, which took place in Las Vegas, Nevada. On the 25th at UFC 266, a heavyweight bout took place that featured Shamil Abdurakamov and Dagestani Sanshu, national champion who was re-entering the octagon a year after a defeat against Curtis Blaze that snapped his three-fight winning streak, and Chris Dawkus, who had finished his last three opponents all in the first round. About his most recent setback as he lands a right hand was when you have a all right, this fight clock is brought to you by the United States. Just saying, though, but it's... Oh, oh. <laughs> Years ago, eventually signed... Oh! Out here, two keys, three. Big ground and pound from Dawkins. Dawkins is on point. Oh! oh that's a right hand! He's got a finish line. Still going on. Mark Smith oh! giving Shamil a chance to survive. Oh, my goodness. What a right hand by... This is going to get him out of here. That'll do it! Chris Dawkins, another knockout! Tim Hayes put ready? his fist Let's out go, as if on. to say, do you want to touch gloves? And Todd Duffy shook his head, no. Well, you know what? They're touching now. Looking Todd to finish Duffy the fight. Over. And over. it is all over! Todd Dufay was one of the brightest prospects in the UFC's heavyweight division. Las Vegas connects with the uppercut. Yeah, and again. again. With an explosive and technical style and a Herculean physique, he appeared to be on his way to contender status in no time. However, a knockout loss in the third round to Mike Russo somewhat dampened his momentum. Despite this setback, Dufay continued to compete and earned a chance to enter the octagon against Frank Mir the former UFC heavyweight champion and record holder for the most finishes and submission victories in UFC heavyweight history. All times, if you want to touch gloves, touch them now. If you're enjoying the action, be sure to smash that subscribe nice counter button. counter there from Frank Mir. His left hand there from Mir. And as expected, starting in the southpaw position here. Oh, oh. another big left hand from Mir. Duffy gets hurt. Duffy landed a great left hand as well, John. Oh! Big jab there from Duffy and Frank Mir is hurt now. Oh. Down goes Duffy out cold! Frank Mir does it again! Rock em, sock em, robots here! Oh my goodness! In 2011, Stefan the Skyscraper Struve was rising through the UFC heavyweight division. More pressure though, Joe, and team. Oh, he oh, he down. Down. Standing as the tallest fighter in UFC history at seven feet tall, the giant submission specialist captured the hearts of fans with his remarkable resilience. At UFC 130, Struve was matched against the six foot seven undefeated prospect and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt Travis Brown, who entered the fight with a perfect 10 0 record. Good kick. Travis feels that his maturity being older, Struve. Travis connected on that one, a glancing shot. Goodness! It is all over! Wow! Travis!
Chris Brown with the Superman punch. After dominating the UFC heavyweight division and becoming the first ever heavyweight champion, Mark Coleman lost the title to kickboxer Maurice Smith. Following a year off due to injury, Coleman returned to face then-champion Randy Couture in a title bout. However, when Couture withdrew due to injury, a 23-year-old Pete Williams stepped in as a last-minute replacement, while also making his UFC debut. It was Pete Williams. Coleman takes it to the ground. Really enough, it's oh, that big one. Does that give Oh, and that was back. Coleman trying to strike, delivering a right. Oh, a big left. Oh, another and another right. looking for an opportunity to strike. Delivering a couple of rights. And another. He got some rights in. And a left. Oh, my God. Coleman's down. That's it. He In terms of raw heavyweight power, Francis tops the list. Having finished all five of his UFC bouts, Francis was on the verge of a title shot. However, standing in his way was Alistair Overeem, who is widely regarded as one of the best strikers in the division, and has also made history as the first man to simultaneously hold major titles in both MMA and kickboxing. Overeem is 60th professional MMA fight. Very interesting. Not a lot of people burning up Nick Maynard's phone to try to get a matchup with a gun. Six and zero oh in the UFC. Left. Oh, the phrase "right leg hospital, left leg cemetery" described Mirko Krokop's signature lightning quick left roundhouse kick. One of the most well-known and dangerous kickboxers and a fan favorite in Pride FC, Krokop joined the UFC roster in 2007 with aspirations of becoming champion. At UFC 70, Krokop was matched up in a title eliminator fight against Gabriel Gonzaga, who had finished all his previous opponents. Not, not all 160 oh. pounds of oh, Superman! Touch gloves, come on, ready to do this. Now they touch. It was was a lack of respect oh. coming into this fight. Very Dude, nice catch. That's a takedown. Again with the elbow. He ate a shot, but he got the take. Merkel looks tentative though. Oh! oh. 